So we got to talk about something, guys. It's been on my mind for a while now, and it has to do with the condition of the wood that you are taking as cuttings. And this is so important because, Johnny, this is, this is so, he's going to start up again. This is so important because a lot of times I find that people are taking cuttings of material that is short, stocky, didn't really get a lot of water through the season, didn't really put on a lot of good green solid growth, and it was never an optimum cutting to begin with. And so I wanna cover this topic real quick. I wanna talk about this and try to uh, just explain what a good cutting looks like, what good material looks like, and what you should be doing to get that material on your plants. So as I'm sitting here on the floor of my hoop house and we're talking about cutting material, my eyes are naturally drawn right to this fig right here. Now, this is a green ischia cutting that I picked up, actually not a cutting, this is a plant I picked up last fall and it sat in the hoop house all winter and finally in the spring it just shot up and this sucker is growing like crazy. But look at all that beautiful, beautiful green growth. Now, this is a fig so it's going to have to lignify. This wood's going to have to become hardened as we go into the fall and then winter before it can be taken as a cutting. But because this fig cutting or this fig material grew so fast and full and is full of moisture and it's just free to stretch out and grow to its fullest potential, it is going to make beautiful cutting material come winter. In contrast, here is a rhododendron that I had out in the sun. It was in a rough area for a couple years and got neglected a lot. I'm sorry to say, but you can see this plant is still recovering. Look at the growth on this. Now, just like that fig cutting, this is putting on new growth. However, the new growth isn't all it's cracked up to be. So when I'm looking for cutting material, I'm looking for material that is long and beautiful and had a lot of water during the growing season and could really put on some growth. If you look up as this thing's growing, there's another season. Now here's this season, this plant's suffering. It's only put on about an inch and a half of growth right there. It struggled to get that growth. It's really fought for every inch of it. And I find that these types of cuttings, no matter what plant you're talking about, don't make good cuttings. They just don't tend to root as well. Now here's another example. This is a rhododendron as well, but this plant material has been growing like crazy. And you can see it's just been stretched out. It's had all of the optimal things that you could possibly give to it so that this branch right here can grow to its fullest potential and that would make a beautiful cutting. So that's an important thing to consider guys when taking your cuttings of your plants because you want to think about the months leading up to the cutting. First of all a lot of you obviously know that when you're taking a cutting you want that cutting to be as full of water and turgid as possible. So a lot of times when I take cuttings, actually all the time, I go out the night before and I water the plant really, really well. So it's got tons of time all night to just soak up tons of moisture and just fill up with water and be full of potential to take the cutting and then have it last for a long time until it's actually able to form roots. If you take a cutting from a plant that is a little bit on the dehydrated side, it's going to be struggling right from the very beginning. But it's not only important that you do this the night before. If you don't take care of the plant months leading up to the cutting, it's not going to grow optimal cutting material just like I showed you in the rhododendron over there. If you keep it watered months prior and you just allow that plant, you give it fertilizer, you mulch it well, you water it well, and you give it the right environment and you encourage that plant to grow to its fullest potential, it will grow tons of beautiful green cutting material for you. And then watering it the night before is just the icing on the cake. So this is just one little aspect of plant propagation, but I thought it really should be covered because you guys need to make sure that you're getting the best cutting material. And I know that a lot of you probably know this, and I know this is intuitive, but I, I felt like it needed to be said because sometimes I'll see pictures of cuttings that people are taking, and it's cutting material from a plant that hasn't really been cared for real well, or, you know, it's just kind of an afterthought. But if you guys want just the maximum potential 
for rooting in your cuttings, you want to take care of that plant well months leading up to the cuttings. And then the night before, go out and just pump the water to it so that when you go out first thing in the morning before the sun gets a chance to dehydrate that thing, it will be full of water and ready to take cuttings from. So if this is something you guys have noticed in your own experiments, comment down below, let me know. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.